If you're an existing yacht owner or you're looking to buy a yacht, you may be considering putting your yacht up for charter to help with those running costs. My name is Tristan from Mortlock Yachts and today we're going through the pros and cons of putting your yacht up for charter. The most obvious pro is certainly going to be money. Running yachts can be very expensive and by putting your yacht up for charter, it can really help contribute to the annual running costs of your particular vessel. A potential con could be your personal schedule and your flexibility. If you decide like next week, I wanna go and use the yacht for a week, if it's already booked for charter, for you then to cancel that charter, you as the owner will need to pay a penalty and the penalties can be up to 50% of the value of the charter. So having your, knowing your schedule is certainly gonna be a pro. If in any given moment you wanna use your yacht tomorrow or next week and it's booked, it's gonna be very difficult for you to use it. However, in a lot of cases, the owner I used to work for when I was captain on board AWOL, he would say, right, get all the bookings that you can, then I'll schedule my use of the yacht around those bookings. So any gaps between charters, the owner of AWOL would use it but every individual is different. Your schedule is different to everybody else's. So you need to really think about that because in some cases you might think, great, I've got two weeks off in a couple of weeks time, but if your yacht's already booked for charter, you're not gonna be able to use it unless you wanna pay that huge cancellation fee. The other thing to consider if you do want to cancel a charter is then going to affect the reputation of the yacht because what charter brokers don't want to do is create headaches for their clients. So if you get a reputation of canceling charters last minute for your own personal use, then charter brokers are no longer gonna be forwarding their clients to your yacht. So your bookings may then go down, which will then affect your annual revenue from charters. Now this next one is a pro. It is based on my own experiences, what I've seen in my career in yachting, is not to say all vessels are the same and run the same, but this is a generalization. And that is that commercial vessels in general are run to a higher standard. The reason being is because they need to comply with certain flag requirements, class requirements, MLC, which is the Maritime Labor Convention, ISM, International Safety Management, ISPS, which is Ship Security, and all these sort of things uh, really elevate the level at which the vessel is operating. Uh, also would be a thing called planned maintenance, which is a requirement from flag for commercial vessels. Whereas private vessels, this is not a requirement. It's not to say they're not run to that high level because they can volunteer to run as a commercial vessel even though they're private, but it is an additional cost. So the owner of the yacht, if it's private, will really need to have a good incentive to run it commercially. Personally, I've said on this channel multiple times, I think all vessels should be run to a commercial level regardless whether it's used for private use or for commercial use. So the next con would be wear and tear. A busy charter yacht, obviously like anything, is gonna get lots of wear and tear on the boat. And as a general rule of thumb, for a busy charter vessel that's doing say a dual season, so Caribbean in the winter, med in the summer, you're looking to do a refit every five, six, maybe seven years, which can cost a lot of money. But if you include that into your initial running budget, it just becomes part of the running costs of the vessel. The next one certainly is crew morale. Running a charter vessel, it's easier to keep the morale high because you're doing higher mileage. And crew, in general, join yachting to be at sea, not stuck in, not stuck in port. The other thing you need to consider is a lot of crew who have joined yachting as a professional career need to accumulate miles in order to step up to their next license. The other thing obviously is gonna be tips from chartering, which is always great for, for crew morale. That's not to say that isn't crew out there that like the private vessels that do less mileage, but I will say majority of crew want to be on busy yachts. As a con on a charter vessel, there's certainly more loops to jump through in terms of you know the vessel certification, your crew requirements, annual surveys, 
Writing a charter yacht, the costs are certainly going to be higher because of all these requirements. There is a lot more paperwork involved in commercial vessels, but if you have a good management team in place like Mortlock Yachts and a good captain, it should be relatively headache free for the owner. The UBO, which is the ultimate beneficial owner, when you want to use the yacht, you will need to take out your own charter contract. And on that charter contract, you will need to pay VAT. As an example, if you're starting a charter in France, you'll need to pay 20% VAT. In Italy, it's 22%. In Croatia, it's 13%. In Spain, it's 21% and so on and so forth. So that is certainly something to think about. However, saying that any works done to the vessel, any purchases done for the vessel, in some cases you can claim back the VAT. Now, this is not VAT advice. For all our clients, we use a fiscal service called SOS Yachting. I'm not affiliated with them, we're not partnered with them, we just use their services. Been using them for many, many years, even back when I was captain on AWOL and before AWOL on Lizzie, been using them. So if you want more information, I'll put a link to their website below, SOS Yachting, and they'll be happy to answer your questions for items related to VAT and to yachting. The next thing to ask yourself is, is the yacht like a second home? Would you be happy for people chartering the yacht to be using your yacht? Um, a lot of owners are more um, private when it comes to their yacht and therefore do not charter it. A lot of owners don't, doesn't really bother them. So that's a really important thing to think about. The next positive is you get to cover more ground at a lesser cost. If you have a charter that starts say in Cannes in the south of France and finishes in Calvi in the north of Corsica, during the charter, the fuel is paid for by the charter client. Okay. Now, depending on what's written on the contract, the client can then either have the boat re-delivered to Can, and they only cover that, or if the owner agrees, the vessel can be left in, in Calvi. So then when you come and use your boat in Calvi, you can use it in Calvi and say, right, we want to do a week charter. We start in Calvi, we finish in the south of Corsica in Bonifacio. You use your yacht for that week. Yes, you'll need to cover those fuel costs, but then let's say you've got a, another charter that starts in Bonifacio after you disembark and then finishes in, that we've done starting in Bonifacio, finishes in Naples, right, that week. So now that vessel has covered hundreds of miles at the cost to the charter clients. So then you then fly into Naples for your next trip and you've not you've not paid for the fuel from Bonifacio to Naples, that's paid for by the charter client. So that's an example how you can cover more ground as an owner, but at a lesser cost. So the next pro for a charter yacht is the resale value, as it's going to appeal to a lot more potential buyers. So if you have a client looking to buy a yacht, looking to charter, we're gonna be looking at vessels that are already up for charter, right? It's gonna be the easiest route to take. Whereas your vessel is private, there is still clientele that are looking for private yachts, but all you're doing is reducing the number of potential buyers. Right guys, so let me know if you can add any pros and cons in the comments box below. Do let me know what you think of this video. If you're looking to charter your particular yacht or you're looking for yacht management, then do get in contact with our team. If you're looking to charter a yacht for a vacation, We've got yachts available all over the world, so do contact our team at Mortlock Yachts. Finally, if you're looking to buy a yacht, do also contact, but also watch this video here, as it gives you some advice of what to think about when buying a yacht. If you've enjoyed this video and you found value in this video, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. See you and ciao.